first band it was uh, it was an Irish band, Thin Lizzy, led by Phil Lynott. And I think they've got, a, I believe they've got a statue of Phil. Big fan of Phil Lynott and Thin Lizzy. Big inspiration. Growing up in Glasgow, I knew a lot of people who did it. It was Irish Catholic descent. The mystery, you know. I guess there was always that kind of link to Ireland and like being a Celtic supporter and stuff, you know, like the badge's got a shamrock kind of. It's, it's a soulful country, you know. It's a very soulful place. When we first played Belfast in, in the late 80s, the energy from the crowd was incredible. Yes, you know, and it went sustained throughout the whole gig. I just felt really happy about coming here, you know. I felt some kind of light with the place, and I don't know why. Maybe it's because, maybe it's a Celtic thing, I don't know. We're in town! Thin Lizzy, big part of my life. I saw him four or five times. Uh, I play Phil a lot. I love his voice. I just, I just love him. He's one of the greatest rock stars ever. And we, we sometimes play Don't Believe a Word with sound checks and stuff. And um, yeah, it's a big, it's a big thing to meet his mum. It's amazing. Ah, uh, you can tell she's got the spirit. She's a big personality. You know? I just want to say hi to everyone. Hi, I'm Bobby. Nice to meet you. My pleasure. Thank you for loving my Philly. We're massive fans, Carol. Thank you. Lizzie. He was a great guy. The last time we played Dublin was we actually had an amazing gig here. It was a big place. We played there last December. It was amazing. Today, here in Dublin, we're playing uh, two extremely small secret gigs. I don't know where the venues are. I honestly don't. So. It's quite a big uh, difference, but it's still going to be cool. We're at the Silver Granite pub in Dublin. We're going to play a secret gig. I don't even know if the audience know that we're going to be the band that's going to hit the stage. Uh, but nevertheless, we're going to give her our best. OK, Dublin, are you ready to get your rocks off? When I was younger, obviously a long time ago, there was no barriers, you know, I'd go and see the cramps in the fall and the band would be there and I would be there, right in front of them. It's so sexy. Baby! It's just much better, people are just right there and you're really playing for them. They're not like 25 feet away. Yeah, it's great when people are up close. Scream are great crack. The music was absolutely blaring all night long. It was absolutely tremendous, man. Seen Primal Scream loads of times. But that, seen them in an intimate setting like that, just phenomenal. A big band like that playing in our local, like, it's uh, uh, unreal. I think we're pretty unique in the way we work. When we had a hit, we loaded. We rented a room in Hackney and built a studio there, like a, a writing studio. And we wrote Schemadelica in that room. And uh, we started some of the tracks in there. So Andrew Ennis and me are the songwriters, guitar player Andrew. And um, we, we kind of go to the studio five days a week and create or try and create. You know, some days we don't get anything. You know, then we had a run of creativity and we just write and stuff. We've been 
been kind of working like that for years. We had a studio 20 years ago, 22 years ago. At that point, 99.9% .9 of rock bands were still writing songs and then rehearsing them and then recording them in a traditional way. And uh, because we had the sampler on the computer, we were, you know, we were working in a hip hop style, but within the, within rock music. High energy rock and roll, intense. Right. <clears throat> no ballads. We don't have any time for ballads today.